Not all achievements were made equal. Some remind you that you have no life, some remind you just how lonely you are, and some are so painful that you start endorsing alien racism. Racism is bad apart from when it's the Krogan. Welcome to the aptly named Insanity Achievement in Mass Effect, aka the Alien Sex Game. All you have to do is beat the game on Insanity Mode, which, if you're smart, invest in the right skills, find the right loot, and command your squad like a real leader, is actually not that hard. I, however, am a complete moron who did none of that. This is how Mass Effect's hardest achievement lived up to its name and drove me to insanity. We kick things off as male chef aboard the SS Normandy. Me and the boys are preparing to head to a planet where we recently received a distress signal. Hopefully they've just run out of tea bags and it's nothing serious, but just in case, we're bringing local alien Nihilus with us. He seems like such a great character, I can't wait to get to know him better. Upon landing, it quickly becomes clear that something's not right here, as my squad mate runs out into the open, only to get gunned down like a minority in Russia. My other squad mate then starts shooting a rock, and I'm starting to question how serious we took this distress call if these are the guys that we're sending out. We come across a woman seemingly running for her life, and I couldn't be happier, because the Normandy was a little bit of a sausage fest. This is Ashley, and as we'll find out later in the game, she's a little racist towards the aliens, but at least she's passionate about something. The planet is filled with hostile geth, but there's no need to fear, because remember, Nihilus is here. He's met up with his fellow alien Saren, and together they're going to save this planet. Saren proceeds to shoot him in the back of the head, so I guess we won't be getting to know Nihilus like I thought we would. This traitor Saren then touches some beacon, and begins levitating like me the first time I listened to Lorna Shaw. After slaughtering Morgeth, who may have just been visiting this planet on vacation, the beacon then tries to touch Ashley. This beacon really reminds me of my uncle, because it also didn't ask for consent. Being the Giga Chad we are, we dive in to save Ashley, but are pulled into the beacon. We get hit with a shroom trip of images, and then wake back up on the Normandy. The first thing I realise is I'm no longer in my armour, which means they had to undress me. Often an embarrassing experience, but today it was actually great news, because last night I freshly trimmed my bush thanks to today's sponsor, Manscaped. This video is brought to you by Manscaped manscaped.com, the premium brand for men's grooming and hygiene products across the globe. Manscaped offers the best tools and liquid formulations for the three big odour zones. Your body, your butt, and your balls. Manscaped have hooked me up with a bunch of stuff from their all-in-one perfect package 4.0, and let's check it out. The first thing I want to highlight is the Lawmower 4.0 trimmer. This is Manscaped's fourth generation electric trimmer with advanced skin safety technology, which reduces nicks and cuts on the most sensitive regions of the body. It's cordless and waterproof, so you can trim in the shower. That's super convenient and makes it easy to clean up too. It also has little LED lights at the front to show you how much juice you have, up to 90 minutes of use with a full charge, and comes with a wireless charging dock. And it's great for travel. By tapping the button on on the front three times, it enables the travel lock feature, which can also be used as the cat safe feature. Also included in the perfect package 4.0, are two products I never knew I needed until now. The Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and the Crop Retriever Ball Toner Spray. Simply add the Crop Preserver after you shower for all day body odour protection. The Crop Retriever is a convenient spritz with cooling aloe vera to quickly refresh the area whenever you may need it. Manscaped didn't fall short of thinking of their disposable shaving mat called the Magic Mat. It has a ton of funnier content and some hair design recommendations if you're feeling, well, a little ballsy. For a limited time, you get all this, plus two free gifts, the Shed Travel Bag, and the Manscaped Anti-Chafing Boxer Briefs, which, by the way, does not say this in the script, but they are absolutely fire. The greatest boxers I have ever worn in my entire life. Go to manscaped.com today and get 20% off, plus free international shipping, plus two free gifts when you use promo code VOI at checkout. Manscaped the perfect tools for your family jewels. Captain Anderson says we need to head to the Citadel and tell the Council about what happened, and Saren being a traitor. Joker, our pilot, smoothly docks us in the Citadel like I did to your mother last night. When I talk to the Council, they dismiss everything and take Saren's side, because he's a trusted member and I'm just a puny human. While I wouldn't exactly call Mass Effect a realistic game, it's good to see that they kept the politics in line with reality. Racist. So we need to find a way to expose Saren, so we head to a bar and talk to Garrus, another alien who's working on a report that may out him as a nonce or a traitor or whatever it is he did, I've forgotten already. On our way there, we get attacked by assassins who are terrible at their job because they shouted, that's him, before attacking me. I mean, I'm no assassin, I've only run over three people in my entire life, but I feel like it's part of the job description to be discreet. After murdering all the assassins, we pop into the club where I sit down to observe an alien stripper. I sit with the strongest back posture you've ever seen because nothing turns a woman on quite like a straight back. So we then head off to find a guy whose hairline is in the same place as Madeline McCann, and he informs 
informs us of where to find Garrus. When we find him, however, there's thugs around him trying to murder him. We clean them up, and I drop a quick tea bag just to remind them who the Alpha of the Citadel really is. Garrus is like, I hate Saren too, I'm joining you. But before we can even do much, we find this other dude Rex. He's been hired to kill the bar owner, but also says this guy could have info on Saren. We once again storm the bar, only this time lighting up with gunfire like we're back in America. We find the owner, and he lets me snipe him in the head multiple times, which is very kind of him. He drops some info, and Rex shoots him point blank with a shotgun, which seems excessive because now his family can't even have an open casket. No less than a few moments later, we find another friendly ally, Tali, and we save her from Saren's men. To repay us for saving her life, she drops a dirty little secret of Saren's right onto our doorstep. A recording of Saren talking to some other woman about his plans, proving he was evolved in the attack on that planet earlier, and is controlling the Geth. That's big news indeed, but not as big as the fact that our crew is now more diverse than a Netflix original. We arrived here, just a few humans, and now look at us. Garrus, Rex, and Tali, all non-humans hopping aboard with us. Ashley is probably really regretting her decision of joining us now. We present our evidence to the council, and they're all like, oh yeah, boss man, Saren is a traitor. What a little dickhead. They make Shepard a council member, tasked with stopping Saren, and promote him to captain of the Normandy. The old captain, Anderson, sort of gets thrown under the bus here, but anyway, we up. Stepping aboard as captain for the first time, I deliver an inspiring speech to the crew. Our enemy knows we're coming. Now, my first decision as captain was an important one. Where do we travel first? It's important, because playing on Insanity difficulty, you want to make sure you head to the easiest planet first. Which one is the easiest, you ask? Definitely not Pharos, which is where I chose to go first. A decision I would very much live to regret. I mean, not only does Pharos have the colour palette of a British dinner, it is also the hardest of the three planets you have to choose from. Joker docks us with ease because he's incredibly hot, and we hop out with Ashley and Garrus. I chose to bring Ashley because her racially charged hatred towards the aliens could really prove useful here when fighting them. There's colonists here being attacked by the Geth, so we're here to figure out what Saren wants with this brown planet. Fighting the Geth, I die a few times because I'm still warming up to the controls, but also because I have no support, as Garrus and Ashley keep standing out in the open taking pounding body shots. What do I do when my my AI teammates are literally the opposite of intelligent. Look at this. I get snuck up on by two Geth because Garrus was dead, so nobody was watching my ass. You would never see this happen to Ashley, because I've always got two eyes locked on her ass even when we're not in combat. Anyway, we all stuff ourselves into a crammed Mako and rammed our way through the Geth until I found myself locked in a room with one of these big boys. The second most traumatizing thing to happen to me in a 20-foot room. We stumbled across a group of researchers who had been cut off from their colony by the Geth. One of them had a missing daughter, so we got to work finding her. By which I mean, I was not actively searching for her, but I accidentally found her. The daughter lets us know that the Geth are here for the Thorian, an ancient life-form plant that releases spores into the air, turning humans into zombie-like creatures. Now we know why they were here, it was time to destroy the Thorian, so Saren couldn't use it for himself. Not only did Mr. Saren have Geth on his side, but he also had a couple of Krogan. And this is where my origin story for what I said in the intro begins. The Krogan are the worst enemy type in this game, because not only can they regenerate health, then regenerate again when they die, they have also figured out a 200 IQ tactical play to defeat anyone on the battlefield. The good old run straight at you and hit you with a devastating headbutt strategy. I do when they fucking charge me. Guys, can we fucking shoot him, please? No. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Fuck's sake. After starting my villain arc with the Krogan, I reunited daughter and mother. We had a little conversation, and found out that the Thorian is going to infect the colony. There was a guy who actually knew about this all along, which ends up in people arguing, but it's okay, because I have terrific conflict resolution skills. Come on! I needed to get to the Thorian and destroy it. Unfortunately, the colonists would not let me. They were very protective over this and wanted to do more research on it. So once again, I would let my terrific conflict resolution skills shine as I just walked on in there and slaughtered every single last one of them. We did have the option of a gas grenade that would allow me to go in there, knock everyone out, and access the Thorian without killing anyone. But what's the fun in knocking someone out if you're not going to take advantage of them? This is where I would face my hardest challenge yet. I'm not kidding. This took me over 
30 minutes to complete. All I had to do was fight waves of enemies and shoot the Thorian's weak spots as we progressed. Easy in theory, tough in practice when my guns had the power of women in politics in the 40s, and my artificial intelligent teammates were much closer to artificial dumbasses. So 30 minutes later, and with finger cramps so bad it reminded me of your mother, we finally defeated the Thorian. Maybe doing this would have cured the people in the colony, and I didn't have to commit a genocide. I mean it's too late now, but just a little bit of food for thought I guess. On the bright side however, we stopped the Geth from using it to their advantage, so it's off we popped to another planet. Our objective here was to find a blue alien woman who could help us find Saren because her mother was actually the person on the recording talking to Saren. I know she's not a person, she's an alien, but I don't know what the proper term is to use instead of person, so I'm just calling her a person. I know, I know, it's extremely bigoted of me, so I'll put out the apology tweet now in hopes that it will help my career before I inevitably get cancelled for a week until, you know, another Minecraft YouTuber touches a kid and it takes the heat off me I guess. Anyway, before finding this alien, I first had to fight one of those huge geth things that was giving me back shots in the box room earlier. After dying a few times, I really started to think that I couldn't do this because I was making no progress. I mean, I wasn't even chipping away at his health bar, and I thought I'd have to come back when I had better gear. I was fighting for my life harder than a lactose intolerant person the next morning after eating ice cream. That was until I deployed the masterclass tactic of hanging back and slowly eating away at its health when it was safe. I was literally playing Sean Dicheball in Mass Effect. So, after using my little bitch tactic to take down Long Neck McGee, me, Rex and Tarly, who much like Garrus and Ashley have been absolutely fucking useless, trooped on until we found this tunnel that led underground. Down here we found the alien woman, but she's trapped in some kind of bubble technology. Well, I mean that or she's just pulling a David Blaine and wants to impress people by showing how long she can survive in a bubble, because the cold-hearted neglect her mother showed her as a kid is now drip-feeding every decision she makes as an adult. Anyway, we fire a giant laser and free her. Her name is Liara, and she's an absolute absolute baddie. Plus, she's not racist, so that's one up on Ashley. If she can be useful in combat, then I'm definitely marrying her. We try to escape with Liara, but a big green Krogan turns up with possibly the biggest turkey neck I've ever seen. Someone please get this man some peppermint exfoliating deep skin tissue moisturiser. We have a fight and take the W, then dramatically escape as the whole place collapses like a Fast and Furious scene, only with less bald men. Back on the Normandy, with me and Liara having a conversation, but Ashley can't wait to interrupt. You just know I'm gonna wake up tomorrow and find Ashley wearing a Human Lives Matter t-shirt. Anyway, Liara touches me because her race can make sense of the visions that I saw when I touched the beacon. This process takes a lot out of her, so she goes to lay down after what's been a long day. I quickly follow her however, because I'm just a young man trying to riz up an alien species because I think we could make a killing on OnlyFans. I also attempt to riz up Ashley after because it's always good to have a backup, even if she is a human supremacist. We head off to another planet to murder Liara's mum as she's working with Saren, but he may also be sexually involved with her, so if we cut her off, hopefully he'll become sexually frustrated and slip up. Liara has literally only just met us, and she's coming along to participate in her mother's murder. She's totally DTF, down to ferociously commit family homicide. God, that was terrible, sorry. <laughs> As soon as we hop off the Normandy, we are stopped by the Powerpuff Girls, but once again, I use my guns as a solution to get them to stand down. To find Liara's mum, we need to hop in a Mako which is in the garage. You need a garage pass to access this, and I don't think the higher ups of this planet will be giving me one soon, as I'm literally just waving my gun around and I've been here for 5 seconds. So we skedaddle off to this dude who says he'll give us a pass if we do him a quick favour. His office is being investigated by the authorities, so all he needs us to do is sneak in there and erase his browser history. I take him saying, sneak as go in there and shoot everyone because well that's exactly what I do. I shot up a nightclub in the Citadel, slaughtered a colony on Pharos, and now I'm taking out authority figures on this planet that I can't remember the name of. Some people chat to a therapist, some people commit genocide. Shepard is just expressing his feelings his way. Anyway, we deleted the guy's browser history because he was looking at 60 year old aliens, which is underage in his species. He grants us a pass and we head out into the snow, and of course the Mako gets stuck, because did you even play Mass Effect if your Mako didn't get stuck like it was a stepsister? When we reached the building, we needed, we were greeted by a new species of enemy called the Rachni. Luckily, Liara is actually useful in combat, so defeating them wasn't too bad. I say not too bad because I did die a few times, but that was probably just me being stupid, let's be honest. Further in, I meet this group of soldiers holding out who are like, oh wow, it's great to see you and your massive penis, Mr. Voy. Please help us defeat the Rachni. Of course, I obliged, and as I have done throughout this playthrough, I take their request a little too far, as I set off a bomb that wipes out every Rachni egg on the ship, so no more can be 
be born. I also wiped myself out because for some reason, I didn't realise I had to leave the room where the bomb was about to go off. The lads from earlier who made me feel good about my penis size then betray me because Liara's mum said to do so. They say sorry before shooting me, which makes the bullet holes in my chest a little easier to deal with, but doesn't stop me from killing everyone. Eventually we do find Liara's mum and she gives us some sort of speech before we all start shooting each other, but for some reason, I'm finding it really, really hard to focus on what she's saying. I don't know why. After defeating a load of her minions, she then tries to plead that Saren is controlling her mind and this isn't her doing. She then proceeds to murder me and her own daughter, so yeah, when I respawn, I show her no mercy. And just when we think it's over, a dead alien comes back to life and starts chatting to us. The alien is being controlled by this Rachni queen who's in the cage who Liara's mum was planning to use for evil. The Rachni asks us to free her so her species can go off and live a life never disturbing us. In the heat of the moment, I burn the queen to death in an acid bath so the Rachni become extinct, as I also blew up all those eggs earlier. Back on the Normandy, we riz up Liara again because there's no better time to shoot your shot than right after the tragic loss of one of their parents. After a little bit of chatting, she does confess that she feels there is something between us, but she needs some time. Of course, we are understanding about this and don't pressure her into making any kind of decision just yet. And when she asks if we can talk about something else, I leave her and go riz up Ashley instead. However, However, there was no real progress with Ashley either, so we're kind of striking out, and I'm worried Shepard may extinguish another species if he doesn't raw dog an alien or a racist soon. We receive word that a reconnaissance on the planet Vermeer have information about Saren. We arrive on Vermeer and it's nice to finally be on a planet that actually has a colour palette. It's a shame we're going to nuke it, but we'll get to that later. First things first, we meet the lads, and they tell us that this is where Saren's main facility is, and he's been using it to breed an army of Krogan. Rex, being a Krogan himself, gets a little in his feelings about this, because understandably, he doesn't want to storm in there and murder a bunch of his own kind. He proceeds to get a little bit aggressive with me, and Ashley doesn't even so much as bat an eyelid, and shoots Rex while his back is turned. She then strolls on over, and puts about four more shots into him while he's laying on the ground. Ah, nothing quite like a racially charged murder to make a great first impression to the residents of Vermeer. Anyway, everyone's just kind of chill about the fact that she just murdered a fellow Normandy member, so we move on with the plan to take out Saren's facility. All we had to do was fight a load of Krogan and Geth, then plant a bomb in a precise location before escaping on the Normandy in due time before it explodes. Light work is what I wish it was. It was anything but light work. I died, died again, again, a few more times for good luck, then took my rage out on the locals of Vermeer who were trapped in a cell as I killed every single one of them, apart from one dude who I left to die in the explosion. I had a little chat to a reaper, who are a life form that have been around for millions of years, but are currently hibernating. Every 50,000 years or so, they come back, go to the citadel, and kill the entire population, resetting everything, and then go back to sleep. Sounds like the ideal life, to be honest, they just wake up, enslave whatever race is there, and then leave. This is what Saren's master plan is, he's bringing back the reapers. Honestly, I was kind of with him too, if it meant that we could make the Krogan extinct. This is the story of how I became an Ashley and started my hatred towards the Krogan. I bloody hate Krogan! We arrive at the bomb site where Ashley is currently planting, but another Normandy member, Caden, is in trouble. As we leave to help him, Ashley starts getting attacked. We are left with the decision to save Ashley or Caden. Obviously we choose Ashley, because Caden is literally the most boring character in the game, and although Ashley is an unhinged racist, at least she's not boring. I would however have to make this decision so many times. I could not stop dying, and what should have been a quick in and out, plant the bomb, save Ashley, instead led me to insanity. What do you do when a Krogan rushes you? Come <laughs> In cover, bro. In cover. Fuck, can you go over there please? No! Oh, now I have to fight the bloody Krogan again. So with a newly born hatred to the Krogan and Caden dead, Saren then appears on his green goblin hoverboard and we have a boss fight. Was this one hard? No, no it wasn't. I fight for my life against a couple of Krogan, but a boss fight I ace on my first try. Anyway, Saren hops off to come down and choke us. I get slightly aroused, but then remember, he's trying to wipe out existence as we know it, so I throw a quick jab, jump on the Normandy, and get out of here before the place blows up. Before we get back to the Citadel to warn everyone about what's coming, Liara and Ashley confront me because I've been 
been sending them both signals. I try to ask if we can organise some kind of agreement, but Ashley is like, nah, I'm a one man kind of girl. So we say, okay, bye bye racist, and of course we choose Liara. Shep and Liara then smash a little later, and finally this man has got some alien pussy, because I was scared he was going to be the one to slaughter everyone in the Citadel if he didn't. Well, even if he was, we were too late anyway, because the Reapers have arrived at the Citadel and pretty much everything has been destroyed. I have the choice of saving the council, and of course I choose not to, because they didn't like me or believe anything I said about Saren or the Reapers, so this is their own fault. We fight through everything in our way until we finally reach Saren, and it was time for the real final boss fight. After our fight on Vermeer, I was confident we could come in and clean this dude out, quick and easy. Oh how naive past George was. This boss fight is where insanity difficulty really lives up to its name, because I was indeed going insane trying to defeat Saren. I started to give up hope that I could even do this. I even seriously considered loading back a save from hours ago, just so I could go back and level up my charm skill so that I could then unlock a dialogue option where you could skip this fight. That's how damn bad I was. Then I remembered how to have to go back to Vermeer and fight the Krogan again, so yeah, no, I wasn't doing that. What I did instead, I am not proud of. I was getting cooked by this dude so hard, I resorted to the only tactic I knew how. The little bitch tactic. I sat at the back of the room, where Saren couldn't push me, and sniped him. I'm so sorry. <laughs> there was however a second phase in a much smaller room where I couldn't run away from him, so yeah, I, I got my karma. I eventually took down Saren once and for all, and this time not using the bitch tactic, using pure Captain Shepard alpha maleness. Joker, the goat pilot, would destroy the Reaper who was docked onto the Citadel, and it kind of looked like it was trying to make love to the Citadel, I'm not gonna lie, but yeah, anyway, Joker destroyed that. Shepard would rise up out of the shrapnel, and I would finally pop the achievement I had been waiting for. Sanity one. All that was left was one last choice. With the council now gone, because I may have sacrificed them, I had to choose who the new leader would be. Of course I chose Captain Anderson, and we would make a humans only council. God damn it, I really- I didn't realise sacrificing the council would result in us becoming racist ourselves and making a humans only council. Ashley is having an absolute field day right now. If you would like to watch me attempt insanity on Mass Effect 2 and 3, be sure to let me know in the comments section. If you would like to see me suffer through some more achievements, click the video on the end screen. I love you all, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.